Earlier on, I was um, in my finishing application, and I'm basically finishing a feature, um, a, sh a feature film that was shot uh, on the Ari Alexa. Um, I basically had a situation whereby um, one of the scenes, my character or the character that was in the film, was shot beautifully against um, a waterfall. The only problem that I was having was after I push the image around in color grading, I find out that since the image was shot looking up, um, I lose some of the beautiful texture of the sky, which I had originally from what the DP shot. So it was um, up to me to basically, um, in my finishing application, to create my own kind of artificial or will I say pseudo tone mapping or artificial HDR to basically create two exposures for the sky and also for my character so that this way at the end of the day regardless of how I'm pushing the image I'm gonna maintain the sky layer and I'm also gonna maintain um, the exposure for my character so I thought about it and I said, okay, now that I got it right, I was going to see if I could do that in After Effects and basically show to you guys uh, how you could do it. And honestly, it took me about just two minutes to figure it out in After Effects. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So basically to create your own artificial HDR or pseudo tone mapping um, when you need to create two exposures um, for your image and just basically move things around so that you're not um, either blowing out the sky or underexposing your characters or underexposing uh, parts of the motion picture that you do not want to underexpose okay um, since I cannot use um, any of the shots from the film itself since um, I can't do that I'm gonna use um, a shot here from my friend James Drake at James Drake Films and it is basically um, shot on the Red Epic at 5k what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna step inside um, the the Red Code Raw itself uh, the metadata and change um, basically my gamma curve to a red lock film okay and that is all I need to change right now and as you guys could see okay this is not it wasn't shot at HDR so it's not like you know I'm taking an HDR image and trying to you know con you guys all right this is not an HDR image at all okay but we're gonna make it into one right now all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, change this to 16 bits per channel and just create a quick composition okay and as you can see this is a very beautiful image basically it is something that is much closer to um, the the real life image I was working on for the film um, James Drake here he shot straight into the Sun with the red epic and you could see right now the power of the epic sensor all right um, you still see even though he's shooting right into the Sun you could still see some texture of the sky I could see some cloud here I could see a little bit of blue here which is awesome okay now the problem I was having when I was um, grading uh, my film is if I try to expose uh, my character a little bit further, what happens is it pushes everything out. Okay, my character will be exposed, but then the background. Okay, I'm gonna lose. I was losing some highlights, um, some some details on the waterfall and some details on the sky. So this is example of. Let me just show you an example of what I was doing. Uh, I'm just gonna use uh, curves here, and I'm just gonna apply it to my layer. All right, so just basically exposing for this character here. All right, and the field, create a quick S curve. Okay, so that's what I wanted. And as you could see, basically that um, kind of variation that we had between the sun layer and the sky is totally gone. Right now, all we see is kind of like a blown out sky in the background. If I turn off the curves, you see what I'm talking about. Okay, over here you see some clouds here. I don't know if um, you guys could see it. Let um, me bring it up a little bit. Okay, but over here you could see uh, some clouds. Then when I turn my curves on or my grade, you know everything is just kind of like you can't even make it out. Okay, so that was the problem I was having. So 
how do you go around this? So basically what you're going to have to do is you have to create two layers with two exposures. All right. So let's just say this is my first exposure. I'm exposing for my character and for the field. Okay, great. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a duplicate of that same image. All right. And, this, and I'm just going to go ahead and reset the correction that I did. So now I'm just back to square one. All right. Now I'm going to expose for just the sky. All right. So I don't need to see any of these here too much. I want to expose for the sky. So I'm just going to start to dial down until I get a little of this, a little more of the sky. Okay. Let's just see it right there. Okay. So now it's even, it, lo even it, it looks much more better. All right. We see a little bit of the blue sky and also the sun. There is a nice distinction between um, the sky and also the sun. All right. Now, in After Effects, it's very, very easy to do this. All you have to do is uh, look for the plugin Set Matte. Okay. That's all you need. And you're going to drag the set mat on top of um, your top layer here. Okay. And all you have to do now is where it says use for mat, change the alpha channel. All right. And use lightness. Boom. That's it. All right. So now what happens is I'm now having my layer that I created here that exposed for my character in the field is passing through. And it is passing through there and leaving the sky layer that was exposed that I exposed for. Okay, so now nothing is blown out. Now I have everything exposed the way that I want. My sky is beautiful, the way that I exposed for, and also my layer here with my um, character and the fields are looking great. And you could go ahead and further just tweak it. So let's just say if I want to push my the fields and uh, the character a little further, I have control to do that without affecting the sky. So as you can see, it's not affecting the sky at all. All right, and I can expose for the field and my character push it up a little more. All right, so this is a very quick and very effective way of creating that kind of uh, artificial HDR um, for your image. If you find yourself in the kind of um, situation that I found myself and you have After Effects, uh, by all means, go ahead and try this and save the shot. All right, thanks for watching.